Okay, so this video is going to go over, oh, hey Lab B. This video is going to go over how abscesses form. So we're going to go over abscess formation or abscess pathophysiology. So essentially abscesses form in four steps. Um, these steps are first, the infection has to get in. So the infection has to get into whatever part of the body it's going to. And then the second part of abscess formation is neutrophils. In general, a bunch of different white blood cells, but we're gonna go with neutrophils because those are the main ones. Uh, the neutrophils will arrive at the scene, arrive wherever the infection is. They'll attack the invader and then they'll die. And then we also have um, a fibrous capsule that will form. Fibrous capsule. And then your final step is just growing of the abscess. So abscess grows um, as the pathogen lives. Um, if you're wondering, I'm writing this on my desk. Um, if you don't have a glass desk at home, I super recommend it. It's basically the best thing of all time. So, um, yeah, just writing right on my desk. It makes uh, med school a lot easier because it's pretty rough. Okay, so those are your four steps of abscess formation. And now I'm going to get into all of the details and whatnot. Uh, so first off, let's draw some skin here. Okay, so here's your skin. Let's take it all the way across. Skin. And on your skin you have a lot of uh, different bacteria. But we're going to go with just Staph aureus for uh, this example of how abscesses form. Because Staph aureus is the number one most common, number one most common reason for uh, abscesses of the skin. Uh, in the abdomen, it's a different pathogen, but details are in the study guide. So, Staph aureus is on your skin, and first it has to get in. So that can happen if I just cut myself, but I don't cut myself. So, um, so if the infection gets in, for example, glass or whatever, you fell, etc, etc. Moves in to your skin, boom. Now you have an infection inside your body. Now you have Staph aureus, let's label this, Staph aureus, and if I make a mistake in spelling, just uh, yell it out and I'll fix it. Okay. So it gets in, uh, that's going to be our step number one, so I'm going to label that step one, the infection gets in. Now we have to talk about how the neutrophils uh, get to this site of infection, etc. So I'm going to draw for you, oh, my red's not doing well gonna draw for you let's get a new red goodbye red so here's an artery let's label that artery and what's going to happen here is the epithelial cells um, from the skin that got damaged and from the artery the endothelial cells they're gonna send out signals they're gonna send out uh, a few different signals. They're going to send out chemokines. They're going to send out uh, IL-1 and also IL-6. And these three things here, what they're going to do is uh, they're going to recruit white blood cells. So you're going to get WBC recruitment. Let's see if I can squish this in here. Recruit. Meant. Just pretend that says recruitment. I promise it does. Uh, and then we also get fever and inflammation. So this, fever and inflammation. Inflammation. Okay, so all these things are going to affect the artery. They're going to make it uh, more porous. So white blood cells that are within 
the artery can come out uh, for your infection. So let's get a, a neutrophil in here. So here's a neutrophil, a little purple guy down here. He's going to get uh, chemotaxic signals or signals that call him over to the site of infection or her, her macrophages, you know, female macrophages, they're all good. So they're gonna adhere to the surface and just kind of move on through or diapodese through here. Now let's draw a nice big old macrophage right here. Macrophage, let's label them. Or neutrophil, excuse me. Neutrophil, neutrophil, neutrophil. We do have macrophages in this area too, but um, I'm not gonna draw them just for, you know, sake of keeping it more simple. So we have a neutrophil here. And he's right next to the Staph aureus, but he can't eat him because the neutrophil needs a little help. So the neutrophil arrived, he needs to attack, and then sucks, but he's gonna die too. So in order to attack, we have uh, molecules that will come out from the blood. Boom, boom, boom. And they'll attach to the Staph aureus. These molecules here, these little brown ones, these are complement proteins. Complement proteins. And they're part of the, uh, the complement cascade. And so these complement proteins uh, make it easier for the neutrophil to opsonize or to eat uh, this uh, little bacteria here. So it kind of looks like salt. Uh, let's say salt complements complements this meal because you know this macrophage he's a uh, pretty fancy speaks in fancy uh, food terms because he's a nice fancy guy I give him a top half but there's no space so these complement proteins make it easier for the macrophage to eat this staph aureus here in order to phagocytize staph aureus who's gonna open his big gaping mouth here boom and try to opsonize or try to phagocytize this bacteria. Uh, also, if we have uh, B cells in the area that recognize the Staph aureus, the B cells will shoot out a bunch of antibodies, like so, like so, that will attach and also uh, initiate a different part of the complement cascade. Um, so that the neutrophil can eat this guy. So let me label this B cell, B cell. Okay, so that's neutrophils arriving because of the chemotactic signals here and attacking because of the complement proteins and the antibodies, okay? Staph aureus, uh, bacteria in general, but we're gonna talk about Staph aureus just for our example, uh, secretes a lot of uh, factors that help it to stay alive. And so, uh, it secretes toxins. Oh no, oh no. So these are toxins. And uh, they're also proteins that block phagocytosis. And so now, instead of being able to eat the Staph aureus, this neutrophil, let's just uh, change his expression here. This neutrophil dies. Dead. So over time we're gonna get more and more uh, neutrophils that are going to come to the area and try to attack uh, but they're just gonna die because Staph aureus is spitting out all this toxin and they just can't do their job. Some of them do actually eat the Staph aureus but they still die because that's what neutrophils are supposed to do. But the Staph aureus just makes it really tough for our immune system to kill it. Okay so that's step two complete. Step to complete. So Staph aureus also secretes uh, a few other things. Uh, it also secretes um, coagulase. There we go. So it spits out coagulase. So let's draw more Staph aureus in here. So coagulase gets spit out. It's all these little green dots here. by the Staph aureus, and it's going to cause um, 
fibrin to fibrinogen coagulase. It's going to cause fibrin to fibrinogen, uh, and fibrinogen is going to form a clot or a ring around this area. So we're going to get a fibrous capsule, like so, which stops more neutrophils from coming in. So let's just cut that off there. So other neutrophils that come to the site, they'll be confused. And they won't even see the Staph aureus because it's contained within this capsule. That's the job of the capsule, to protect Staph aureus from the immune system. Uh, some, of the, uh, some of the neutrophils still get in, like those sneak all in here. But in general, most of them will just uh, be trapped outside and Staph aureus will continue to grow inside this capsule. And so that's step three. So step three is the capsule. And then over time, um, the bacteria inside, Staph aureus for our case, will continue to grow. More neutrophils will continue to come in and die. And so the abscess will just continue to grow as the pathogen lives. So then you just get a big mess of Staph aureus, plus neutrophils, plus debris, and it just ends up looking really gross. And there's your abscess. So that is uh, what an abscess looks like. And let me just label that step four, the gross step. So there you go, step four. And we had step two down here. Um, so that's step four, the abscess is growing. And so that is the pathophysiology of how abscesses grow. Hope you learned something. Have fun, guys. And girls.